everyone. Thank you for joining us today on this episode of Book Review and many other things these days because we are diversifying. We're posting music videos. We're posting everything that will edify and help us grow and bless us. <laughs> so today we are doing something we've never done before. We have a guest. But before then, have you ever sat down to wonder as a woman or as a lady if it's possible to juggle between marriage, your life, your career, being a wife, being a mom, still being a friend and a sister, and all of that. Today, we have an amazing, super beautiful, intelligent, godly, lovely woman who is going to talk to us from her wealth of experience. You know how she's been able to handle herself, handle she's rising on her career like you know she's not stopping, she's not seeing any stop sign. So I'd like us to sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode as we chat with Mrs. Ama Obioma. Welcome on the show, ma. Thank you so much for joining us today. It is such a privilege that we're hosting you. Thank you so much. I, I feel honored to, to be here. <laughs> we are honored. We're honored to have such a distinguished lady like yourself. Thank you so much, man. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Have we met you? Just give us like a little, you know, insight about who this gorgeous lady is. Okay. <laughs> so my name is Mrs. Ama Aiba Inini Ubioma. I'm 39 years old. Wow. <laughs> Very detailed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I'm from Biofa State. Married for 12 years now. My God. To my husband, who is from Abia State. And I have two children, Godsville, who is 11, and Chimamanda, who is 8. I am a human resource professional, and I work with the Nigerian Educational Research and Development Council as a HR administrative officer and I want to call me any work because I basically do everything. everything. I, I don't have a specific schedule because I work directly with my director. Um, I also do HR remotely for startups. I have some, I work for now with Hide Solutions and my boss, Dr. Lao Bakari, is very, um, a very intelligent person. I'm learning a lot, so it's more like a volunteer position for his organization to help me learn and expand in the private sector. Uh, I am also certified in HR with personal professional in human resource management, with a master's in human resource management from Liverpool John Rose University. So, yeah, that's my professional side. And yeah, I'm a mother. I know what I That part is really important for us because, you know, I I have watched you. Uh, I have made up a profile for you in my head. Like I know that you do so much, and you're successful as a mom, as a wife, and you know on your career. I mean, that's basically why I work here. So thank you for that little bit of insight. Now let's dig into the juice of this event. <laughs> so we have a couple of questions that we prepared for you. But feel free to take us wherever this leads because we wouldn't want to like restrict you. So the first question is a funny question. Uh, did you have like marriage fantasies before getting married? <laughs> if yes, did you get them? Or were you surprised at what you eventually got? <laughs> <sighs> so this question is easy to answer <laughs> because it's come up in so many conversations with people for me. Yeah. I never ever dreamt of having. I've never imagined myself in a dress. I've always been afraid that I wouldn't be a wife, like a good wife. Yes, that I'm going to play off uh, because I don't. I'm not the conventional woman, African wife. You know, no wife material that imagine. Yeah, like oh, I don't know which way has. <laughs> So it had always terrified me yeah. to to think of. So I think I blotted out that part of life for me. And wow. So why did you have a vision of what you want to become? But well, looking at it now as where I am, it's better than what I could ever have imagined. And maybe if I imagined it, it would have restricted. Yeah? Yes. 
because you know if i have to buttress a little of what you've said a couple of persons who i've heard talk about the plans and the fantasies they have before marriage they they met a lot of surprises there. Right. yeah i think that those fantasies makes you define your path yeah you don't leave it to let's see what god has in store for us you know you've made a choice and you just want it to be what you have said it's going to be you don't you don't allow god to surprise you and you know blow your mind kind of thing but thank you so much at least it's somebody there to hear that you don't really need to just trust god and he will just lead you thank you so much for that man so with your experience in marriage what can you say is the actual from your experience from your perspective what's the actual definition of a peaceful marriage uh, okay so a few days ago i had to think about this because i i i just a friend who was having some trouble and from that lens and the lens of mine what has made mine peaceful and different from what they have is that at every point in a relationship in the marriage one person has to be the same i agree <laughs> one person being the same <laughs> it doesn't have to be one person at all times but you swap all times the roles. there has to be the person who's ready to relax and in doing this it has to be communicated so yeah summary one person being the same Yes, I love this one. I love this one. So if you're not married and you're looking to, you know, be married someday as you're dating that guy you are dating, how often do you agree to be the fool for peace to ring? How often does he agree to be the fool that you guys might have peace? These are the indication that you are in for trouble or you are in for something beautiful. Remember that. So my this number number of years, said you've married for like 13, 12, 12. years. So have you learned anything that has helped you through this journey to be a better wife and a better mom? I struggled with the wife part in the beginning. In the beginning. Because this is you're married to someone who is not that much older than you are, and yet you have to be on that person as a human. So <laughs> I struggled. I thought it was I understand. Respect. After respect everyone. I'm telling you. Yeah. But so the I, husband kind is a special kind no, of No, it was. <laughs> and all through the marriage kept complaining. I have one control in our entire marriage, which is that you don't respect. But I respect you now. I'm respectful. I respect this guard. I respect everyone. Even people younger than me, I give respect. So how can you say I don't respect, respect you? you. But this is where God helped me. I learned submission. Yeah. One day in church, I heard the preacher say, and Abraham called, um, Sarah Sarah called Abraham Lord, and the light shone in my eye. Like, so this is it. This is the respect my husband has been talking before. about. Yes. Yeah. It was me seeing him as Lord. And when I talk about this, they think it's hard. Because how do you see your. It's not this guy. Yeah. <laughs> this guy. This guy not in town. Oh God. It's white shorts. <laughs> How to be my lord. But Please. I learned that that's the way to be make being a wife easy. And the moment I became that person that saw my husband as lord, his decisions in my life are final. I can only beg my way through. Yeah. I won't insist on whatever he says yeah. I should do. And so I live on the basis that he has decided to offer me. I know it's not conventional in this day that people people feel I'm a new generation woman and I'm the boss of myself. I'm not the boss of myself. I'm the boss. And the hierarchy is God, my husband, and then everything else. So that has helped me be a, a better wife. And in being a better mom, I'm a I'm more of a do what you see kind of person. I'm example. not much of a teacher. I'm more of a leader by example. Yeah. So the day I gave birth to my son, I became another person. Everything I fought with to stop or be better at became it like a natural. Yes, I love it because someone was watching. So you need remembering that someone is watching, and they're going to be me in a yeah. few years. Is also something that helps me be better. Wow. I hear, I hear a lot of new moms say, I became a 
a new a whole new person when I gave her. I think this this explains it. The fact that someone is watching mm-hmm. and that you have to, you know, be able to be a good example yeah. to yeah, because I think what most parents what mis- the mistake that most some parents make was to try to point the children to the way not but they will not work on yeah they will not work on the path so i love i have learned i'm not yet a mom soon to be <laughs> but i have learned something today, yeah. trust me thank you so much for that response so you talked about communication and you know how you know it takes good communication for your marriage to work from both parties of course so i want i'd like to ask how were you able to handle things on the days that you and your husband shared you know different opinions about a particular subject matter i'll take you just back to yesterday yeah she was working on something and i need to make an input because he wasn't honest there was a part that he was glitching and i explained it but he wasn't hearing me and it, he, he became defensive and i let it go and we said it again at some in the evening and this was time we had chats and he said i'm being caps <laughs> like i'm screaming at you but i do that See? not for you <laughs> and, i was i mean caps oh, no and that's why you yelling <laughs> i do it so i understand <laughs> you know i he actually said a voice note instead of typing plenty are you but i said this morning what we <laughs> what we really said the issue it was it was it was all he had understood where I was coming from well, and sorted yeah. it out. So it's it's just about knowing how to communicate and when to let it go. You yeah. don't come fire for fire when when everybody's defenses are up and high. Yeah. We're all human. Yeah. And there are subjects where if they pick at you, you you would you would feel judged. And most times it comes from what you're feeling inside is not necessarily what the person is trying to communicate. Exactly. So you have so to put person. up a defense immediately. Yes. Yeah. So you have a person, you need to understand that's not you about you. So don't take it personal. Don't get angry. Yeah. So I just don't get angry. Yeah. And I think it also starting with the end in mind. What this communication you're trying to do? What are we trying to achieve? Are you trying to win? Why are you trying to communicate? Should we not win? No. <laughs> what did I say? We both win together. Yeah, actually, yeah. the win-win situation is yeah. better for them. Yes, I agree with you. So that's the end of my yeah. try to win-win, not I. Yeah, when we reviewed uh, seven habits of um, highly effective people written by Stephen Harcourt, that was one of the habits. Mm. Think win-win. I think it was habit mm-hmm. three or four. Mm-hmm. Think win-win. When you're that, that was at the level of interpersonal relationship. Thank you. So that was a nice one. Thank you very much, Ma. So our next question is this. What do you think are the common misconceptions that ladies have about marriage? What are the common misconceptions? And how do you think that, you know, they can change that? Okay, so with this generation we were in, I think the biggest misconception is that you're supposed to marry a man that's supposed to take care of everything about you financially. Mm-hmm. It's a misconception. I don't think you're you are a charity case. I mean, it's it's a help. Go to an orphanage if you need help. You know, <laughs> you know. I mean, so I think that's one of the big ones. Yeah. Secondly, I think people assume that you're marrying a perfect person. Mm-hmm. Are you perfect? Anybody's work in progress. Stop mm-hmm. expecting someone to be what you're not. Then, but the people don't go to they just shallow. So they marry for help, like financial stability. Beats me what I can't be to myself. Mm-hmm. Come on, see this. Happen. Yeah, and then also the goal of perfection. Yes, I, I agree with you. I, I feel like. Uh, one year married people i know you saw my wedding video so don't i'm just giving you from 12 months okay no i'm 13 months now, so. i mean i mean you're counting <laughs> it you said you have said counting <laughs> so i think that what i did for myself before i got married was to be able to exist alone so can i pay my bills can i fend for myself generally am i emotionally stable am i how do I deal with people? You know, a lot of things that has to do with me first. Can I exist alone? Because you're getting married to someone who may not want to talk to you every day. 
so that I'm not so needy and clingy and all of that. I, I, I used to think, I, I, I see people who are in relationships or marriages where they cannot travel. I want to be able, as a wife, I want to be able to travel. I want to be able to do a lot of things that I can not, not, you know, there are things you give up when you get married, but I still wanted to retain me to a certain safe degree after marriage. Mm -hmm. So I had to take out time to work on that. I feel like a lot of ladies, guys are like too, but today we're trying to talk to ladies. A lot of people just, you know, want to dump their, um, wounded or on health unhealed self, on healed on health self, on refined self, on another person to do the work. To do the work. And that person yeah, to yourself. Yeah. And now you you are you're not going to give birth to kids who now needs attention. You need attention. Your kids need attention. Your so the spouse needs attention. So the burden is on one person sometimes and it's chaotic. Yeah. So I think everybody should be able to get in a safe space with yourself first before you think of okay i think i i am ready for a husband or for a wife yes uh, and of course this has nothing to do with maybe you've been hard from a relationship mm -hmm. you know it's just why work in progress like you said there are things i didn't know when i was 15 i knew when i was 20. Mm -hmm. i don't think i was ready for marriage at 15 no. because of course i I, need, I needed some certain level you of don't know what you're nice. exactly exactly and i'm still discovering i'll be a different person at 50. so we'll talk about this for a long time but that was that was a good one thank you so much thank, Ma. You. thank you i would say finally because everything we're going to do is touching on this marriage matter mm -hmm. but what advice would you give to your younger self about marriage if you had the opportunity to so you know in the beginning i said i was i didn't think that was marriage material mm -hmm. but being here for 12 years i would tell myself that enough that I, I am good enough to be a wife and that I'll be great at it and that I'll enjoy the process. Of course. So that's what I told me. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you don't have to worry whether you are calm enough to be a wife or raz enough to not be a wife. <laughs> just marry God's will. Be in God's will and, you know, everything is just going to pan out. Yeah. I assure you. It will be, it will be okay. <laughs> So this segment is going to answer questions about our guest's career and how she's been able to, you know, handle everything about her career and still grow as a career woman. Because trust me, it is crazy in the career world. Yes, it's highly competitive. You have to be on your toes. You have to know what you are doing. So she's going to, you know, give us a little bit of um tea spill some tea <laughs> on how she's been able to handle all of this so my our uh, first question would be for how long have you been working how long have you been in your workforce so i did my nyse in 2007 sorry i finished the rest of 2007 i started in 2008 into 2009 and you have your place of primary assignment from that time so since 2008, I have been working oh. till now. I first served in in a um, PFA, and then after that, I worked as a secretary for the owner of Amigos Supermarket. Wow, in Abuja. Yeah, <laughs> for six months. Wow. So I worked in both Amigo and Wonderland as a secretary for the owner. Okay. And then from there, I got to Zenith Bank and worked up until I got married. So that's, if you're counting from 2008. That's like 16 years. Yes. So yes. That's, that's, that's a big one. Yes. Yeah. So um, and our next question is this. How were you able to navigate your childbearing season? How were you able to navigate that with your career? Okay. Yes. I took in. <laughs> on the, 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 the week I got married, I can't pinpoint the day. So, <laughs> so I got married pregnant. Yeah, I mean that's what you more say. or less. Yeah. Yes. So, um, I took in that week, and there's been no break. But I navigated it well enough because I was coming from a very high-paced work environment, which was the bank. But I had swapped to public service just as I was getting married right. in preparation for how I would be a mom. 
because it would be much easier yes. in the public sector to be a public the service. banking sector can be very demanding my bosses would be at work and their kids would be on admission wow it in the banking sector yes it wasn't something it wasn't, wasn't a palatable, palatable experience yeah. so I, I didn't want to experience that so i left the bank for with the higher earning and also my career path was not there in the bank no. So it was easy to transition. It was, it was, it was in the bank. I was operations. I was doing tellering, marketing, all of that. But I wanted something sustainable, and so I started building my career in human resources management. Yeah. I can be a HR in the bank, but at that point, I wasn't in that capacity. So imagine spending 10, 15, 20 years in the bank, and then you leave and you have no relevant experience because your background education has been in banking, and you're everywhere. So it wasn't a big characteristic. Yeah. So how were you able to, you know, cope with work and, you know, being on maternity? How long were you away? Did you miss work? In my time, maternity was four months. But now I think they've increased it to six or one year. You know, it's changed. Oh, well, I'm in the private sector. We do three months. <laughs> but I think there's a new law. Yeah, but you know, not every organization um, is practicing. Yeah, true. Yeah, so it just depends on where you are and how you are able to negotiate with your employers. Yeah, but then around four months, yes. there about this. So it was, I was off work for those four, but I planned it in a way that instead of leaving a month to delivery, which is all you're supposed to do, yeah. I leave just before. So that you so have a longer four months time. With my child. And then you resume there after that. It's, it's, so God gives you the grace, Bertan. I agree with It you. sounds hard looking back, I agree. but it doesn't drown you. You're able to do it with ease. I was an exclusive for six months and I was working and my office is in after Bobalada. That's fine. And yet I was doing exclusive breastfeeding for my child. Were you taking your child to work? Mm, no, I didn't take my child. <laughs> <laughs> I had a caregiver at home who was amazing. And all I do is do the express. It looked yeah. like a lot of work. I would even express in the office. Against the next day? Oh, yes. There's nothing to go to waste. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I so know. you just, every time is useful. So it's just about timing and planning. So I think that's one of the things that essential in being a mom. You have to know how to plan your time. Don't leave everything, anything to chance. Yes. If you want to achieve, you have to plan. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah. You can merge it. Career and, and, and motherhood is, is easy with planning. Uh, yeah, I know that. But I'd like you to speak to this. Uh, how much of support would you say you got as as a new mom? Mm, yeah. My mom stayed for just a month. I had just lost my dad six weeks before I had a child oh, wow. so she it was a very tough time and she's actually my mom is still working in service so I don't have an old mom who you has just stay with you so she gave me a month of her time and left at exactly a month after I had my child but I got someone to help me and she stayed with me up until she had to go to university so it was easy because I had one stable person at the time to help me. Yes. When it wasn't my mother, it was her. Someone else. Yeah. That's beautiful. And it helps if you have a husband who is that person for you. Oh, yeah. In my case, I don't have a baby, baby, babysitter husband. Who, he doesn't, it's not his forte. He's more of a provider, so he wants to be outside to bring in what you people need. Yeah. Yeah, it's just I think what 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 would what would help everyone is understand your partner and what role that they are willing to play and can and yeah, exactly you know on Sunday somebody brought their baby to church without yes, their wife it was and I told my husband I said you do this for me he said where would you go no that can't be my husband I saw that <laughs> I think it cannot be this cannot it cannot be <laughs> it would, it would, my husband and I have go and pack bricks. In a, in a that care for the baby. Leave the baby. Not even at home. Go in less than six months, you should strap the child. <laughs> so when it starts crying, what will you do? So people have different strengths. Exactly. And Just what they are ready. Understand what everybody can, you know, 
help you with it. Yes. Exactly. And yes. then take advantage of, of it. Yes. Exactly. Don't force people into the boxes they can't fit into. I think that's also us recently in that conflict. Yeah. I agree. Thank you for that point. It was important. So I would like to know, this is like a fun question, just, you know, <laughs> what what were your childhood dreams? What were your plans for life generally? What did the girl in you desire and want? And are you living the life? Ha. Huh. Little Ama. Um, uh, she was bubbly. I was such a bubbly person. And all I wanted to be was happy. I just wanted to say, so there was no box for me, but I just wanted a place where I could, I didn't have to switch off who I was. To be some other person, to yeah. feel in. You know, and I think that was part of why I felt inadequate to be a wife. Because everybody has a picture of what a wife should be. So yeah, the picture, what did I want? My dreams were, even for education and career goals, I didn't have a clear cut picture. I just knew that somehow, the next phase of my life always came at the right time. I knew I needed to leave the bank, for example, but I didn't know where to. And it came just right in time. So as a little girl, I wanted to be happy. I wanted to do the best I could at every time and just let life take me where I started to Yes. Yeah. So I never had, you know, people had clippings. This is what, what I want here. This is what's going to happen when I'm 25, when yes. I'm 30. No, I oh. didn't have... My mom had a vision for me though. And I think having a mom that has a vision for you also makes you not even really dream because she's drumming a vision. My mom wanted me to be a lawyer. Oh, yes. <laughs> she wanted me to be a lawyer, but I didn't want to be a penguin. <laughs> I'm sorry, lawyer. I'm sorry, no. We just gave you a new name. <laughs> So, I want to be stuck in a white and black of my life. So it was terrifying. I think that color of outfit is just for Nigerians. I see lawyers abroad. They look nice. They look like book pen for me. Even when they go to court, I watch, I, I do movies a lot. So yeah. I see lawyers in court sessions. They dress really sleek. Oh, I love lawyers in Nigeria. I mean, I, I have lawyer friends. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, my mom wanted me to be a lawyer and, and, and I'm also looking at doing something in the future in administrative law no, okay. because you can't separate my resources from legal. Exactly, because yeah. you know, you know, you have to know what labor law is as pertaining to your employers. Yes, yeah. even employment um, issues that come up always have legal angles and we always be an employer. Yes, exactly. And workplace mishaps, workplace injuries. So I want to be able to approach the marriages from a legal angle. My mom is finally happy that maybe I will have no insight. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like I said, my mom had a dream and a view and a vision for her child. Yeah. So maybe it made me wipe it out. <laughs> So yes. would you say that at this point you are, you are you happy with what you got? Even if you didn't dream, you didn't have all of those things, you know, scared, cut out. This is what I'm going to be. Are you fulfilled as of today? Of course. Okay, so I am happy. I'm proud of where I've gotten to, which is most important. Yes, I am. I'm happy that by time I'm able to push through whatever goals I've. Shut them. Yes. Terrible. I've looked at. I have a screenshot. I have in my notes where I wrote things I wanted to do career-wise, and so far I have ticked three of the boxes, and they were all really huge over a year or two-year plans. Yes. And, you know, so I've been, and this was written in twenty twenty, and this one twenty four. I've ticked three boxes, so that's actually progress. Yeah. Yes. So I'm. I'm very proud of how far I've come, especially with me have a clear-cut vision. Yes. But somehow, while you inside of my marriage, I was able to still reset where I wanted to mm. go. Reset. Yes. Reset. Reset and replan. <laughs> I'm telling you. Because now you're in life, you're living life, you're someone's mom. And like I said, they're watching. Yeah. So it makes you, okay, what do I want to do? What do I want to be? What what are these people going to see to see mommy 
is or who daddy is who they want to be like so it helped me with plan and then of course like you said everybody's working and okay like i said everybody's working progress okay. and we're all healing from things that once worried us my mom's voice was always in my head but now i'm, I'm the mom and i'm in my head so exactly. i'm able to redo and replan and have a vision for what i want to be so i am happy and i'm hopeful and expect a lot of where the journey is going to lead next and i know it's going to be beautiful amen seriously i think my big point here is the reset yeah. the reset a lot of persons are worried about this is not where i saw myself this is not these are not the plans i had you know especially for women i know men also have these challenges but you see a woman who used to be very dreamy i want to be here i want to be able to travel i want to be able to do this i want to be able to you know make a use make an impact mm -hmm. you know impact my world and today i'm just stuck i'm just a mom i'm just limited to caring for kids mm -hmm. the word there is reset replan go back to the drawing board how can i what steps can i what tiny steps can i take to becoming tiny steps please take note of tiny steps because you know every journey begins with a step of course yes yeah, so tiny little steps that build up over time to become the giant giant strides yes yeah, so very important thank you so much ma thank, thank you. you so much okay ma for this last question for this career segment i'd like you to please uh, answer for us what your advice would be the ladies who are faced with the hard decision of having to choose between building a career it could be business it could be working in an, in an organization so who are faced with the with the hard decision of having to choose between building a career and raising a family mm -hmm. because many a times i have heard i have seen women give up their lives to have kids to be a wife to be a mom you get sometimes no business you get it's not like they have a business that they go out to every day so what would what would be your advice to the kind of language i'll come from my own perspective and my own experience in my marriage in my work experience and in the lives of those i've come across so this is going to be a mixture of what I've experienced and seen. Yeah. I am of the belief that if you're in an extremely fast-paced career path, like I was in the bank, you may want to, if it is time for kids, because there are always phases. If you're in your childbearing season, you may want to take something a bit Less slower. Demanding than being that I'm going for CEO at 25 person and face the home front to raise the children while they are very delicate but not leaving your job or the business you're building just prioritize so let's say your childbearing at that point is going to be your priority but you have your career as number three probably but not number zero of course right because everything adds up and builds up over time. Business or whatever, the wealth of experience you have is going to count for something. So I'm not such an advocate for a break. Especially in time where I now, there are remote opportunities to, in every area of the world. You can do hybrid, you can do remote, remote. and all of that. So don't remove yourself. yourself. Just if that's where you want to raise children. But for me now, I'm done with children because my last child was eight. So I'm at the point where they are quite self-sufficient and now I have jumped on the full burner of career. Yeah. So you may you may swap for some people. people. Some who may be very invested in the career in the beginning. But once the children are ready to be born or catered to, you have to slow down. You can't serve two masters, one must suffer. Yeah. So you have to, if you want to be in charge of this, choose the suffering. The tempo with which the suffering will be. Not winging both as priorities and then you... At the same level. It won't work. You may drop the ball so hard in one of them that it costs you everything. Yeah, I agree. It may cost you your child, your family, or even a very huge loss in your career. 
agree. Not in something you can control. Yeah, I agree. I think the key word for me here was prioritize. Yeah. You can have everything, mm -hmm. but at certain degrees for time. Yes. So you don't have to let go of everything. You can have everything, but you know, determine which is important and you know, give them most of the attention and not neglecting the other aspect of life. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Ma, so to wrap up this career session, I'd like you to say something to a woman, a lady, a girl out there who has become a mom, who is so focused on her kids, misses herself and has stopped dreaming. Mm -hmm. What would you tell that woman? It's, it's, it's such a bad place. It's such a bad place when, because, well, first of all, everything is a layer of good. You can't even be good in that thing, motherhood or wife, without you. You have you can't perform an empty cup. Of course. So if 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 you want to be because you feel part of the reasons why mothers give up career and stuff is to be the best version of themselves because they want to be good moms and good wives yes. but i promise you you can't be one without the self inside so you have to for the sake of those things you think you value value yourself again dream again love yourself again find one thing per time that reminds you and takes you back inspires you yes you, you don't have to figure it out and the age we are now we have youtube with so much information and opportunities you know find someone you can mirror exactly who has an honest path that they're showing you and pick one thing at a time don't you can't pour like i said again you can't pour from an empty cup and why you, you said they're giving up because they think they're trying to from what? Nothing. You cannot give what you don't have. Yeah. And then I think over time it builds resentment for self. Yes. Resentment for what they thought they were trying to build. Yes. Which is the marriage, the children. Yeah. And then Even after a while, the husband who sacrificed for one value. I agree. Because he's flying. Yeah. He didn't take a break from being who he was to be a husband or be a father. Mm -hmm. So why should you as a woman sacrifice yourself? There was something PMD said at the last meeting that we had. She said women have to be empowered. Empowerment doesn't have to be so big. Mm -hmm. It can be something small, that, something that you look forward to, yeah. something that you live for. Other than being a mom, mm -hmm. being a wife, you know, these other things, they consume you. Mm -hmm. But you know, your dreams build you mm -hmm. for where you can pour out yes. what you said. You have to. Yeah. I did so lovely. And even the children so not stop dreaming. I'm proud of who you are. My mom is she gave up. Yeah. Yeah. And then how do you inspire from not what you're not doing? I agree. This morning I was doing my exercise and the kids were doing everything. And she my mother says, I'm as brave as my mom. Oh God. Maybe not show, you know, our kids that it's okay to give up. No. It's okay to stop being yourself. No. no. It's yeah. the worst thing you can do. I agree with you. I'm learning so much. I have never told you this, but, you know, you're one of the people in church that inspires me. Yeah. You there, my mentor. <laughs> oh, how many years? Please, I cannot be put in trouble. <laughs> I hope we've been enjoying this session. I mean, we've been chatting with the most amazing, most <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ma. It's been an awesome moment. Yeah, me too.